so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are said to heal and try the heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> you say to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You sit at the right hand of the Father, and we receive for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty God, Lord Jesus Christ, only God's Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why then, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now, I will let you know what I need to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are its cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry, the word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God, that surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received, and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Testament was identified with Israel. In the New Testament, 
With the blood of Christ, we become people of the new and eternal covenant. Now let's see how that vineyard is tended. God does all the work. He establishes everything according to his wisdom and in his love. And then what does he do? He hands that vineyard, those people of the covenant, over to leaders. What Isaiah is prophesying about in that first reading today is called the Song of the Friend's Vineyard. The Song of the Friend's Vineyard. What's Isaiah railing against? The corrupt leaders of Israel. The ones who were entrusted with this great covenant, this great gift. And what did they do? They turned their back on it, all the while saying, we're, we're following the laws. Well, you might be following certain laws, but you're, getting, you're missing the point of the law. It's not enough in the Old Testament, it's not enough just to circumcise your children. You've got to live with the attention constantly of your heart moving towards the Lord. Sometimes as Catholics, we are very sacramental and incarnational people. We have rosaries, we have scapulars, we have images. A friend of mine uh, used to be the organist, growing up, he used to be the organist of the Divine Redeemer Church, and his wife was a visiting nurse. And, uh, you know, they lived in the Sunbury area, and she was given charge to visit some people in Atlas. And she said, well, what's the direction of your house? Okay, listen to the address. Well, it's the house with the statue of Mary in the window. Now, folks, look in your blocks. How many of your houses, your neighbors, have statues of Mary? That doesn't really narrow it down much, right? And the trap that we can fall into is saying, I'm a good believer. I have a rosary in my pocket. October is the month of the Holy Rosary. It is not enough just to carry it but that we meditate upon those mysteries of our Lord and the Blessed Mother. It's not enough just to wear the scapula. It's not enough just to carry a statue through the streets and towns celebrating heritage and faith. We have to be inspired by the martyrs, St. Marzion, for instance. It's not enough just to say that we follow the law. The law has to move our hearts toward greater love, love of the Lord, and love of fellow man. So, the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel is the moral of the story. But the deeper meaning of that is that we have to identify when we don't tend the vineyard along with the goodness of God. When we neglect our part of the covenant, that's the Think about covenants. They're very hopeful. The covenant is this. God will always remain faithful with us and to us, even when we turn our back on him. He's always ready to take us back. He's always ready to reconcile us. But yet, we have to be willing to admit our faults and say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. This is what happened then in the gospel. Jesus is stealing the metaphor of the vineyard from the prophet Isaiah. And then what's he doing to those leaders? He's talking about how the Father, how God, sends all these representatives into the vineyard, into, into, into the world. And those representatives were the prophets. Another one they beat, another one they threw out, another one they killed. And then that owner says, I will send my son. And what did they do in killing the son? It wasn't just an act of ignorance. It wasn't just, just malice, bad will. It was the statement saying, uh-uh. You have no ownership here. It's ours now. You have no heir, O oh master of the vineyard. We'll kill off the heir, and we become the heirs. They grow so greedy, so envious, so rageful, angry, at 
the beautiful thing entrusted to them, that they would do anything in order to take full control of it. Now, this first Sunday in the month of October, in the United States, we call it Respect Life Sunday. And month, the month of October, Respect Life Month, where we pray in a special way for legal protection of human life from conception through natural death. That's a very finicky thing right now. You have to admit that. It's a very difficult thing because we say, well, well, but, but what about these exceptions? And really, what are those exceptions reflective of in our own thought? I don't care what's been handed on to me by above. I want to control what I want to control. And we have to admit that as people of faith. We have to be humbled by that as we are stewards of this vineyard of God's kingdom on this earth. What does it mean to be a steward? That we have to take care of it, we have to represent it, we have responsibility for it, but it's not ours, but it's an honor that we've been entrusted with it. I couldn't tell you who the owner is of either Delta Airlines, Continental Airlines, or United Airlines. But if I ever fly, what shapes my opinion of the owners? The steward or stewardess. Nowadays we call it flight attendants. The ones who represent the great organization. As Christians, dear friends, how do we portray our stewardship of this marvelous gift of this earth, on this earth, and importantly, the greatest gift on this earth, which is human life? How do we care for it. Our part of the covenant, God will give us all that we need. God will provide for everything that we need. But he hands us the keys and says, steward it. They're going to know me, the Lord, by the way they do, my stewards serve. As the director of seminarians, and I was talking with some folks uh, last week when I was filling in, uh, the seminarians that I'm going to be sending from henceforward are going to have the specific charge to work with your guardian angels outreach. That's part of your way in this parish of tending the vine of human life. Be humble by it. Think about how great that is. What a beautiful service that's given. Father Hutzko does the same thing over at St. Peter and Paul and Mount Carmel with those, with those free lunches for people who are needy, not just in material goods, but also in friendship and companionship. We need one another. Think about this time of pandemic. I look forward to the day that we have a campfire in the rectory courtyard and Father Brummer and I and Father Snyder are able to torch all these dumb masks. They were not made for people who have to wear spectacles, right? However, however, if this is what it takes in order to preserve the gift of elderly life who might not, people who might otherwise have compromised immune systems, our hearts go out to the people who are suffering from this over at Mount Hugh, that we cannot let our guards down, that we do what is our part and never fall into the trap of saying, well, yeah, but they were old anyway. My mom and dad are some of those old people. Don't tell them I said that. If you see them at Boyers, please don't tell them I said that, okay? You know, this far, my mom called me up in March. My mother called me up in March, and I was just sitting there going stir crazy, and I, I work with some, you know, I don't want to give any private information, but I, Two of the priests I work closely with, one of them has high blood pressure, another one has had a number of different health concerns. I'm healthy, but I don't want to inadvertently negatively affect them. My mom called me up and she said, John, it doesn't look like we're going to have Easter Mass. I said, you're right, Mom. I, it looks like we're going to be locked down. And she, she almost had a tear. 
tears in her eyes. And she said, I've never missed Mass on Easter, and I very, very rarely miss Mass on Sunday. She said, I feel horrible. You know, I was this far away from getting my Mass kit and driving up home on Easter Sunday to have a clandestine Mass over at, on their dining room table. Priests can do that every now and then, for, but I thought, what if in this act of courage, I accidentally do something that I regret? When we tend the vineyard, there's a real reckoning of humility for us. That I can't do things that I might have my first impulse to do. Especially when the greatest fruit of that vineyard is human life itself. In my previous assignment for seven years uh, in York, I was taken out to lunch by two lovely ladies, or excuse me, at breakfast, and I knew something was up. But whenever someone takes you, well, we want to take you out to breakfast, and it's like out of the blue, it's like, oh, what do they want now? And um, so we went out to breakfast, and then after breakfast, they said, no, Father, Father so-and-so is retired, and we need a priest on the Pregnancy and Family Resource Center Board of Directors. Well, what did it entail? Oh, a meeting every quarter. That's it. We just need a priest on the board. Oh, sounds easy. They didn't tell me they were beginning a capital campaign and expansion. And or the meetings were 7 o'clock in the morning, for that matter. But we went through. And we moved from the second floor of a row home in Princess Street, New York, to an industrial center road, but maybe it was to have an ultrasound machine, to then soirees and luncheons where we raised a couple hundred thousand dollars in order to move into an old carriage house of one of York's old mansions, which was long destroyed. And there, the Women's Care Center, we are sure, prevented hundreds of abortions already. What gifts has God given you in order to build that culture of life, the culture of the Lord's vineyard? The, the talents that God has given you, the resources that God has given you, entrusted to you to help be stewards of the vine. As people in the covenant, God's always there for us in that covenant. He's waiting to help us. We have to be willing to assist Him. So let's ask the grace of this Eucharist that we celebrate, that we might always be faithful, that we might always be willing to work with God's grace, to be truly be stewards of the vine, and that when the Lord comes to send His Son that second time, that glorious and second coming, we can greet Him and say, I've done all I can to tend your vine. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father of all maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father
Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one the holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence as God's beloved sons and daughters, we offer these prayers. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For all bishops, especially our bishop, Bishop Ronald Gaynor, may the Holy Spirit continue to guide them in their holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For lawmakers, may the God of justice guide them doing out their own duty with wisdom and a sense of service to all. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who struggle in faith, May the Lord console them with the promises and help them in their unbelief. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, may the calling of Christ echo in our hearts, give clarity to our desires and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they be welcome into God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Father Andrew, that God will continue in his recovery from the surgery. And we also pray for our President, Donald Trump, that he'll be healed from coronavirus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. At this time, we may uh, lift up our own prayers in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, hear these prayers that we make through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, along with the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through whose intercession we pray, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim.
May the sacrifice of our reconciliation be pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Ronald our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good.
Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. On this feast of St. Francis of Assisi today, uh, remember in your prayers our neighbors, uh, conventual Franciscan friars in Shiloka who do yeoman's work for priests recovering from hip surgeries and whatnot. Uh, and also remember the uh, Bernadine Franciscan sisters who served previously in Marian Heights and in St. Casimir's. And we give thanks to, what, uh, to God for what St. Francis of Assisi began and the people who continue that work begun 850 years ago. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into the house of Satan and all the angels' spirits who prowl about the world, seeking to ruin the souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mary Kay, is there an announcement today? Um, potato cakes? Where? <laughs> <laughs> we, we will be selling potato cakes this coming Friday from 3 to 7 p.m. <clears throat> Over at the active, well, at the pitman shed. Got it? The best is ended to the Thanks, Steve.